araw, good evening, or magandang araw sa inyo. Uh, so, nandito na naman tayo sa panibagong ano, no? uh, discussion on database design. Uh, bago kayo mag-continue, please uh, ensure na, na pakinggan nyo na yung video lecture regarding sa Peter Chen Entity Relationship Diagram. Uh, kailangan po kasi yun. Maging yung ano, uh, database nor normal normalization ni uh, Boyce at saka ni Cod. Okay? So, kung hindi nyo pa yun napapakinggan, na ayun, post nyo na po ito. Uh, stop nyo na. Then, panoorin nyo muna yun. Okay? Then, balik na lang kayo after that. Okay? So, I assume dahil nag-continue kayo, ay uh, napanood nyo na yung dalawang lectures na yun. So, let's continue. Ang title po nang didiscuss natin ngayon is uh, From Manual Paper Forms to Third Normal Form or TNF Using Chen Entity Relationship Diagram or Chen ERD. Okay. So, itong next slide, nandito yung ano, uh, delivery receipt. So, ang gagawin natin dito sa uh, discussion na to is uh, tingnan natin kung paano ulit ginagawa yung ano kino-convert yung paper form papunta sa Chen ERD and ang gagamitin natin ay itong mga BIR sample uh, forms ano so this one is the sample delivery receipt so mapapansin niyo na ano no uh, this is a etong form na ito ay ano uh, ang nagbibigay ay BIR mismo so meron kasing mga forms talaga ni required uh, required ni BIR na dapat susundin yung pattern okay so in terms of delivery receipt ito yung pattern nila at the minimum dapat meron ganyan okay so ano ba yung mga map mapapansin natin dito yung nasa taas XYZ Corporation ito yung uh, may-ari ng delivery receipt ito yung business na may-ari ng delivery receipt uh, so kailangan merong name of the business uh, yung address pati yung ano uh, tin number then mapansin niyo ano may nakalagay na nanvat uh, kailangan kasi nakadeclare kung yung resibo mo ay vatable or non vatable. Ayan. Then yung title ng form which is delivery receipt, yung mga information ng pag ng client ng customer na pagdi-deliveran yung delivered to date ng deliver, uh, tin number ng client, yung address nila at saka terms of payment. Okay, so ginamit natin itong delivery receipt sa ano no normalization pero yung point of view na ginamit natin is uh, point of view ng ano ng client okay that's why uh, tinanggal natin yung delivered to tin at saka address at saka sinimplify natin yun so yung nasa ilalim na information yung nakalagay dito printer uh, tinanggal na muna natin for simplification but dito sa gagawin natin isasama natin lahat and ang gagawin natin is point of view ng ano no ng nag deliver so point of view tayo nitong XYZ Corporation kunyari si XYZ Corporation tayo hindi tayo yung tumatanggap kundi tayo yung nag papadala ng uh, ano ng mga products Ayan. and then ang susunod na items dito are uh, quantity unit and articles and mapapansin natin ano siya table format ibig sabihin under sa mga columns niya, multiple data items yung pwedeng ilagay. And then, may nakalagay sa ilalim, uh, receive the above goods and services in good order and condition. So, this is a general, so, itong form na to is parang contract siya, ano, na, uh, which is, ano, a, a, a contract na acknowledgement form na ina-acknowledge mo na natanggap mo first yung uh, number one, natanggap mo yung bagay na in-order mo. And number two, uh, natanggap mo in good order and condition. So, pagka pinirmahan mo to bilang ikaw yung receiver na customer, pag pinirmahan mo itong form na to ibig sabihin, after that, pag saka mo palang uh, sasabihin na, ay, yung natanggap ko yung packaging may butas, may sira or something, so hindi na ano yon hindi na valid 
So, hindi mo na pwedeng uh, ireklamo sa DTI, uh, ireklamo sa, oh nga, basically DTI, yung ano, yung nag-deliver. Kasi, uh, yung Department of Trade and Industry kasi yung authority pagdating sa ano eh, sa mga pro, uh, product delivery. Okay, so, ibig sabihin kasi, napirmahan mo na, sinab- sinumpaan mo na, na uh, natanggap mo ng maayos, so, wala nang bawian yun. And then, customer signature, our printed name. So, dito, ang gagamitin natin, customer signature, since tayo yung nagdi-deliver dun sa customer. Pero yung last na example natin dun sa uh, normalization, uh, tayo kasi yung tumatanggap from the ano supplier, tayo yung receiver, kaya kinonvert natin yung customer signature sa uh, receiving staff or received by staff. Okay? So, yun yung nakalagay dyan. And then, sa ilalim, nandito yung ano, uh, BIR authority to print number. Yung nasa taas, uh, nakalagay lang 10 booklets, t- uh, 3 times. Tapos yung OR number, which, uh, uh, OR number range, which is 1001 to 1500. So, yung, uh, sorry, hindi OR, DR, DR number. So, ang magiging number pala nitong collection na to, itong booklets na to, ay mga resibo numbering from 1001 to 1500. And makita nyo nga sa kanan, ayun yung DR number, 1001. So, ito yung first page ng DR booklet na ito. So, sampung booklets daw, ano? Tapos yung three times, ibig sabihin, triplicate, tatlong pages, uh, tatlong papel sa isang set. So, pwedeng sa ibabaw yung puti, sa ilalim ay may blue, and meron ding kulay dilaw. Uh, uh, normally kasi magkakaiba yan ng kulay per, ano, per sheet. So, ayun, ibig sabihin, ano, triplicate yan, nakatriplicate per page. And then, BIR authority to print number. Bawal mag-print ng, ano, ano, ng OR at saka ng DR nang walang tinatawag na authority, authority to print na uh, nanggagaling sa BR, uh, BIR. Ayun. And then, date issued, valid until. So, ibig sabihin pala, itong DR, delivery receipt, ay napapanes. Pag lumampas na ng date na valid until, yung nakalagay dito, no? July 29, 2018. Ibig sabihin, hindi na siya pwedeng gamitin. Ayan. Dapat uh, pupunta ka sa BIR, pipilasin mo yan, then kukuha ka ulit ng another uh, authority to print. And then, nandito yung printer. Hindi lahat ng printing press ay pwedeng mag-print. Ano? Uh, kailangan yung uh, printer ay nagpapa-credit sa BIR na malapit sa kanila. So, ayun, kagaya nito, birth uh, printing services. And then, ano yung address and tin number nila. Plus, dito sa kanan, naandyan yung accreditation, BIR accreditation number ng printer ni birth uh, printing press. At saka kailan in-issue yung accreditation number. Okay, so, uh, yung mga, ano no, mga descriptive, kagaya yung receive the above goods and services in good order and condition, This document is not valid for claim of input taxes. This delivery receipt shall be valid for five years from the date of uh, authority to print or ATP. So, hindi na natin isasama yan sa, ano, no? sa entities natin. Okay? So, yung, iba, yung nabanggit na lang kanina. Yan. Tapos itong kanan nga, anong tawag dito is delivery receipt number. Okay, so, ang first step, Mag-draw muna tayo ng entity. Uh, delivery receipt entity. Ayan. Then, pagka-drawing yan, then, i-identify na natin. I-drawing na rin natin yung ating mga attributes. So, most of the attributes are single-valued. So, company name, company address, company tin, iisa lang naman yung value niyan. DR date. Uh, ang nakalagay lang dun sa DR number is number, ano, NO. Pero gawin na na, kumpletuhin na natin, DR number. Then, delivered to, lagyan natin ng alias na client name. Then, client team, client address, payment terms, customer signature, or actually, this is received by. 
BIR authority to print number, authority to print, uh, authority to print date issued, ATP valid until, uh, printer accreditation date issued, printer accreditation number, printer team, printer address, printer name. So, lahat sila ay uh, simple, uh, simple attribute na sim uh, single value. etong tatlo, yung naka-table form, quantity unit, saka articles, uh, iba yung ano nila, drawing, double lines, kasi uh, multi-valued sila, multiple yung values, kasi makita natin naka-table format nga. Isang attribute, pero maraming uh, data uh, items yung pwede natin ilagay sa ilalim. Okay? So, kaya tawag sa kanila ay data, uh, uh, sorry, multi data attributes. Okay, so review natin. Ano nga ba yung rules na kailangan nating i-follow from para yung from unnormalized form or 0NF ay maging first normal form. Ayan, so how to achieve 1NF? Number one, kailangan there must be no multi-valued attributes. So, kung multi-valued siya, ihuwalay natin siya ng entity. Uh, second is, all attributes must be simple and single-valued attributes. All composite attributes must be uh, must be assigned to a new entity to reduce them to simple attributes. So, sa una, no, uh, no multi-valued attributes. So, ibig sabihin, ang assumption natin, pagdating dito sa number 2, lahat ay single-valued na. So, ang concern na lang natin is kung composite yung attribute. Kasi yung composite ay i-reduce -re natin into uh, simple attributes. Next is, uh, there should be an attribute aside as primary key for all non-key attributes of the entity. So, yung buong uh, entity, dapat at least may isang primary, primary key representing, the, ano, uh, representing them. Okay, so ano yung assessment? Kung titingnan natin yung ano, yung ating uh, delivery form, kailangan natin i-separate yung assigned multi and assigned multi-valued attributes to another entity. Ano nga ba yung mga multi-valued? Quantity, unit at saka articles. So hiwalay natin at ilagay natin sa gawa tayo ng bagong entity para sa kanilang tatlo. And then merong ano no, uh, may tatlo na uh, ayun. kailangan natin identify yung comp composite attributes may tatlo na company addresses na naandyan so si client address, printer address at saka owner company address so yung address kasi pwede pa nating i-break down yan i-break down um, so yung street address yung uh, town city pwede town city and uh, province. Ayan. So, pwede pang i-reduce sa simple attributes. So, ang question is yung name, company name, pwede ba nating i-reduce? Hindi pwede, no? Kasi, uh, unlike yung name ng person, ang name kasi ng person, may first name, middle name, last name, at saka suffix. Ang company names naman or business names, walang ganun. So, hindi tayo pwede, hindi natin pwedeng i ano no i decompose or i reduce yung ano yung company name Ayan. so i think wala nang ano eh <coughs> wala na ako nakikita pa na pwedeng i reduce so far ano so ang pwede na lang nating gawin para malaman kung uh, may may i reduce pa tanungin natin yung client kung uh, Meron, so, depende kasi sa context ng form. So, kung meron pang pwedeng i-reduce. So, kailangan, ayun, sa interview natin, i -papaki, i -i ano, i maipaliwanag sa atin ng client kung uh, paano sinusulat yung forms. Or, uh, mas maganda pa nga kung meron tayong mga sam sample data na nakasulat dun sa mga forms, mga at least 2 uh, to 3 forms na filled up, Para may idea tayo kung ano yung mga data na inilalagay. Para makapag-decide tayo as a designer, as a systems analyst,
kung kailangan ba natin i- uh, kung siya ba ay composite yung uh, yung data item na yun or attribute is uh, composite ba or not. Ayan. And lastly, uh, dun sa buong form ba ay may pwedeng gawin tayo na ano? Na primary key. So again, ano ba yung primary key? Kailangan siya ay unique at saka hindi na duplicate or hindi nagre-repeat yung uh, value. So ano yung pwede? Makikita natin, pwede yung DR number. So, ang DR number ba, inire-represent yung isang buong delivery form? Ang sagot, yes. Okay, so, i-convert na natin, i-apply na natin. So, dun sa ating uh, Peter Chen Entity Relationship Diagram, ano? So, by the way, bakit, ano, importante na binabangat natin yung pangalan ni Peter Chen or yung apelyedo niya na Chen? Kasi may ibang, ano, no, pamamaraan na pagdodrawing ng Entity Relationship Diagram. Uh, yun nga, medyo masanay ako sa UML, uh, Unified Modeling Language. Ang UML ay ginagamit na design para sa object-oriented programming and meron siyang sariling version ng pag-drawing ng ano, Entity Relationship Diagram. Ayan. So, mas maganda kung bagitin natin na Peter Chen yung ginagamit natin. Ito yung mas luma. Okay? So, ayan, na-drawing na natin sa Peter Chen Notation. Uh, nasa gitna ulit yung uh, entity ng delivery receipt. And then, inihiwalay na natin yung multi-valued. Ano? So, ang naging pangalan ng kanyang entity is articles delivered. And then, in-identify natin yung uh, ano tawag dito? Yung composite attribute, yung client address, company address, at saka printer address. At idinigdag natin yung mga simple form nila or simple attributes na street address, town, city, at saka province. Ayan. And then, in-identify natin kung ano yung, uh, number three, na-identify natin yung pwedeng maging primary key ng buong form, which is DR number. Ayan. So, after drawing this, nakaano na tayo? First nor normal form, or 1NF, ng ating design. Okay. Uh, punta naman tayo dun sa susunod na normal form, uh, which is the second normal form. Ano ba yung rules? Dalawa lang actually ito, pero pinaghiwalay ko kasi ng sentences, kaya naging tatlo. So, ano yung first na kailangan to achieve uh, second NF or second normal form? Number one is everything from, uh, everything should be uh, from first NF. So, kailangan naka first normal form muna bago natin gawing second normal form. And then, all non-key attributes is an entity in an entity uh, must be functionally dependent on the whole primary key uh, can can be a super key okay so yung key uh, so titingnan natin yung ano no functional dependency uh, meaning there there are possibilities kasi na magkaroon ng duplicate values ano uh, repeating values uh, like for example yung uh, address ng ano ng customer na pagdi-delivera natin ng client pwedeng same ano lang same street address same town city same province uh, pero ano yung ano uh, ano yung kung hindi natin alam yung ano yung business name ano yung pwedeng uh, key na magdi-distinguish sa kanya so pwede yung uh, tin number Ayan. Hindi pwede yung business name eh. Uh, sa bagay, pwede rin. Kasi dapat unique nga yung business name. Walang kagaya. So, ayun. Candidate key yung business name. Uh, candidate key din yung uh, TIN number ng business. So, pili na lang kayo kung alin yung gagawin yung primary key. Ayan. Okay, so non-key attributes that are only partially dependent. So, pagka hindi siya dependent dun sa primary key, it should be assigned to another entity. Ayan. So, tingnan natin kung ano yung mga dependencies nila. No? Uh, ayun, nakalagay lang na naman dito sa assessment is that titinanong niya kung everything is already in 1NF at the answer is yes. 
uh, all functionally dependent attributes were left in the dun sa main entity which is the delivery receipt entity well four new entities were created to accommodate the partially dependent attributes okay so tingnan natin yung peter chen diagram natin ayan sa delivery receipt ano na lang yung na entity ano na lang yung naiwan so dr number dr date payment terms uh, customer signature ayan and then uh, nakahiwalay na naman yung articles delivered ano yung mga bago na entities ayan client company BI authority to print printer company owning company ayan. so yung owning company hindi naman yan dependent sa delivery receipt ayan uh, yung delivery receipt pwedeng magiba-iba yan pero same pa rin yung owning company so hindi dependent so yung uh, mga attributes na company name company address at saka company tin sa DR number. Ayan. Kaya iniwalay natin yan. Same with the printer. Ano? Uh, kahit magbago-bago yung DR number, uh, DR date, at saka customer signature, uh, hindi dependent itong tungkol sa printer company, which are printer tin, printer name, printer address, pati yung kanilang BIR accreditation number at saka accreditation date issued. Yung BI authority to print, another form ng BIR, ayan, hindi rin naman, ano, dependent kay delivery receipt number. Uh, actually, mas dependent itong ATP date issued at saka ATP, ATP valid until dun sa BIR, authority to print number. Ayan. So, uh, again, ano, ang primary key ay sinusulat ng uh, may underline uh, sa ellipse din and then may underline sa ilalim. So, papansin natin, ano, may sari-sarili palang Uh, primary key yung mga bagong entities na ginawa natin sa owning company yung company tin printer company printer tin client company is uh, client tin din then yung P BIR authority to print pwedeng gamitin natin yung uh, BIR authority to print number bilang key ayan yung date issue at saka ATP valid until Uh, magkakaibang form pare-pareho yan ng ano uh, ATP date issued saka valid until and actually ano eh uh, candidate key din yung dalawa pili na lang kung ano na yung mas mag pinakamagandang primary key uh, in my mind pinakamaganda the best is BIR authority to print number And decide na lang kayo kung ano yung pinakamagandang primary key niyan. Okay, so naka, uh, naka ano na tayo? Uh, second normal form. Ano na lang kulang? Walang relationships. Ayan, lagyan natin. Ayan, so nandito na tayo sa third normal form. Ano ba yung mga rules? Everything from 2NF. Ayan, so kunin lang natin as 2NF. Bawal ang mag-jump from 1NF to 3NF. Kailangan dumaan talaga sa second normal form. And then, second rule is, all attributes must be functionally dependent on only one. Ah, all attributes must be functionally dependent only on the primary key. So, hindi siya dependent sa iba pang ano, uh, attributes. Kung dependent siya sa ibang attributes, baka kailangan ihiwalay natin siya. Attributes that are only partially dependent on the the primary key must be assigned to another entity. And ano yung assessment natin? Uh, yung current and uh, ARD is already in the second normal form. All attributes are now dependent on the primary key, key given uh, to each entity. Uh, relationships have been created with corresponding constraints and cardinalities. And so, identify na, na, na rin natin. Although hindi sinabi sa rules ng third normal form ano pero better na ilagay na natin yung relationships uh, relationship cardinalities and constraints so ano yung difference ng cardinality sa constraints yung constraint yun yung minimum number yung cardinality ito yung maximum number ano so constraint yung unang number yung pangalawang number ay cardinality then number four Now, uh, an assessment, a new primary key has been created for the entity without the primary primary key. 
all foreign keys are incorporated in their related entities. So, dahil may relationship na, kailangan may relating na attribute. Ano? So, ang the best way na gagawin natin, yung uh, primary key ng isang entity uh, ay ilalagay natin sa ano, dun sa as foreign key dun sa uh, kung saan related siya sa na entity. So, ano yung ano, uh, ano yung mga rules in creating foreign keys? Uh, number one, kung meron kang dalawang entities, yung isang entity ay uh, ang cardinality niya ay one, yung pangalawang entity ay ang cardinal cardinality niya ay many. So, yung primary key ng uh, naka-one na cardinality, yun yung ilalagay natin sa naka-many na cardinality. Okay? Kasi, ayun, many siya, mas magandang doon natin ilagay yung primary key nung una ni entity A uh, as foreign key doon sa entity B. Ayan. So, what if, ano naman, Uh, what if pareho siyang uh, many to many yung relationship uh, tingnan natin kung may ano kung yung constraints naman so alin yung strong entity alin yung weak entity so yung strong entity ito yung uh, optional yung participation niya ibig sabihin uh, pwede siyang zero uh, ang minimum niya ay zero pag minimum ay zero yung entity na yun or optional siya, uh, strong entity siya. Ito namang kabila, pagka ang minimum ay one, so weak entity siya. So, an ano pipiliin natin? So, yung sa weak entity natin, ilalagay yung primary key ng strong entity bilang foreign key. Ulit, ito yung ano no, meron kang strong entity yung primary key niya, ilalagay natin sa weak entity as uh, foreign key. So, yun yung kailangan natin guideline. So, kaya kailangan natin yung ano, uh, constraints and cardinalities. So, tingnan natin yung Peter Chen na diagram natin. Uh, okay. So, delivery receipt. Doon muna tayo sa owning company. Ang isang delivery receipt kailangan ay may maximum na isang may-ari at minimum na isang may-ari so one is to one uh, so weak entity rin ito no relating to dapat ang owning company hindi siya pwedeng mag-business nang walang resibo ng delivery receipt so at least may one na ano siya delivery receipt or many ayan so pareho silang ano no uh, required na, ent na entities tingnan na lang natin yung cardinalities uh, ang cardinality max yung owning company isang ano lang maximum of isang company lang yung pwedeng mag-ari ng delivery receipt pero yung company pwedeng magkaroon ng maraming delivery receipt so yung primary key ni owning company yun yung magiging uh, foreign key magiging foreign key ni delivery receipt. So, ang inilagay ko na lang, no? nilagyan ko na lang ng arrow na FK. Ibig sabihin nun, foreign key siya ng delivery receipt. Ayan. Si printer company, ganun din. Ano? Uh, yun nga lang may, ano, may contention kay printer company. Meron kasing printer TIN at saka printer accreditation number. Ayan. So, definitely, ang better nating ano, Uh, gawin na foreign key. Pipiliin natin doon sa dalawa. No? Ang pinili ko kasi itong printer accreditation number. Uh, kasi yung printer tin, pwedeng printer nga siya, printer company, pero wala na mga accreditation sa <coughs> excuse, sa BIR. So, better yung printer accreditation natin number ang gamitin nating foreign key doon sa delivery receipt form. Okay, so yung BI authority to print uh, makita din natin may one to many na relationship. So yung BI authority number ang gamitin nating foreign key. Uh, yung client company ganun din, client tin. Uh, ito naman ano, 
isang delivery receipt ay related lamang sa isang client company. Hindi pwedeng isang delivery receipt, multiple companies yung pagdideliveran. Hindi rin naman pwedeng isa, uh, isang client company is ano maraming Ah, ano pala to? Okay. So, ang relationship niya is isang ano, client company. Ayun, inedit ko lang ano, nagkamali pala ako na marking. Isang client company pero nakaka-receive siya ng maraming deliveries. So, kailan siya pwedeng tawagin na ka client company pag at least isang beses nakapag-deliver ka na sa kanya? Kasi pagka hindi ka pa nakapag-deliver, hindi pa siya client. Ayun, kailangan mag-deliver ka muna ng isang beses para ma-consider siya as client. And then, ilang deliveries, ilang delivery receipt ang pwede mong ibigay sa kanya, ilang times ng delivery ang pwede mong gawin, pwedeng marami. Ayan. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, relationship ng delivery receipt, receipt form, tapos ano yung relationship niya sa articles delivered, uh, eto no uh, yung delivery receipt delivery receipt yan kahit walang ano no uh, articles delivered uh, pero hindi ka pwedeng mag-deliver ng walang delivery receipt Ayan. and pwede ring mag-deliver ka ng maraming items So, strong entity itong articles delivered. So, ped, optional siya. Uh, wala siyang pakialam kung uh, wala siyang pakialam dun sa delivery receipt. Pero sa si delivery receipt, may pa, uh, sumasang uh, kailangan niyang sumunod dun sa number ng uh, articles delivered. And uh, Ayan. So, ang primary key natin dito is yung item number. Lagyan natin. Wala kanina, no? Uh, lagyan natin ng item number. And then, dahil uh, hindi kasi sila, ano, no? Ang cardinality nila ay hindi one-on-one one one yung cardinality, kundi one-to-many. So, ilalagay pa rin natin na yung primary key ni delivery receipt Uh, yun yung gagawin nating foreign key dito sa articles delivered. Ayan. So, unahin natin yung uh, role ng cardinality. Pag pareho ng cardinality, uh, saka natin titingnan yung, ano, no, yung constraint para malaman kung saan natin ilalagay yung foreign key. Ayan. So, in this case, kahit na strong entity yung articles delivered, dahil siya naman ay many, na entity uh, yung cardinality so sa kanya pa rin ilalagay yung uh, foreign key hindi kay delivery receipt number okay so hope you can appreciate itong naging final form i ano natin no convert natin siya dun sa tinatawag na entity set okay so itong entity set walang values ano so uh, Uh, other word for entity set is tables, ano? Uh, data tables. Uh, itong entity sets natin empty. So, parang ano lang siya, uh, template ng ating entity sets. Ayan. So, meron tayong entity name. Uh, so, from one form, ano, ilan na nabuo natin na tables or entity sets, meron tayong lima. Yung original na delivery receipt, and then sa ilalim yung articles delivered, may printer company, owning company, client company and then may authority to print Ayan. so hindi ko na i ano ano uh, hindi ko na inihiwalay yung company address kasi tightly related siya dun sa ano eh company name uh, ang magiging ano kasi niya
Uh, una-una, medyo sikip yung pagdodrawingan natin, pero pag inihiwalay natin entity, hindi siya magkakaroon ng ng primary key. Ang primary key ni company address, yung company tin din. So, pero you have the option na ano din, ano? Ihiwalay din as an entity yung company address at saka company addresses nitong mga ano, nitong uh, owning company, printer, at saka yung client uh, companies. Okay. Medyo nasasaguan akong ihiwalay kaya ano, hindi ko na inihiwalay. So, personal decision as a designer lang 'yon. Pero you have the option to kung sa tingin niyo ay ano, okay lang. Okay, next example, meron tayong sales invoice. So, this is another form that is a ano template of BIR. So, ayun, same ulit ano, may owning company, then yung title ng form which is sales invoice, then sold to, ito yung client, uh, ang nadagdag is business style, may terms pa rin, date, may ano na, no? OSCA, PWID number, uh, SC, PWD signature. So, yung OSCA is Office of the Senior Citizens Affair. Okay, so Senior Citizen ID number. PWD is a uh, persons with disability na ID number. So normally sa ano yan, no? Under ng DSWD. Pag nakakuha sila ng ID doon, ayun magkakaroon sila ng number and then they have to sign kasi may ano, may discount ang senior citizens at saka persons with disabilities. And then medyo marami yung ano repeating articles natin, ano quantity unit articles, unit price, and amount. And then sa ilalim, may computation, total sales, tapos yung less uh, senior citizen PWD discount, at saka total amount. Too. Then meron cashier, yung authorized representative, and then yun ilit, ilang booklets, uh, ilang uh, sheets per, ano, per set, and then yung uh, sales invoice number yung lowest at saka yung highest dito sa set na to BI authority printer number yung information ng printing company and then uh, may mga ano discla- uh, may mga statements lang dito sa baba so hindi na ulit natin itong this document is not valid for claim of input taxes at saka this invoice shall be valid for 5 years from Uh, date of ATP pwede nating hindi ano uh, hindi na isama okay and then itong nasa kanan is uh, SI number 1001 uh, okay. actually pwede pala nating ano no isama sa attribute itong dalawa yung this, do- this document is not valid for claim of it in taxes kasama kasi siya dun sa ano no uh, BIR authority to print saka this invoice shall be valid for 5 years yung validity pwedeng sa authority to print siya so uh, pwede kidagdag natin yan okay so i-convert natin sa ano sa 0NF sa unnormalized form so again yung ano muna yung Ano yung uh, entity muna natin, sales invoice. And then yung uh, attributes, naka, ano, no? single line na ellipse. Company name, company address, company TIN, SI number, SI date, sold to, client TIN, payment terms, client address, OSCA, PWD, ID. Uh, yung signature, business style. And then, may double lines tayo dito. Quantity, articles, unit unit price. Dahil, ano sila, multi-valued. And then, yung amount, 
uh, multi-valued siya pero pwede nating derive derive from uh, unit price and quantity. So quantity multiplied by unit price makukuha natin sa amount. So uh, dalawa yung characteristics nitong ano attribute na to no. Number one, multi-valued siya kaya double lines. And pangalawa ay derived siya. So kaya uh, ano siya broken lines ang ginamit natin pang drawing. Okay, so susunod is total amount due. So simple ano siya? Simple na attribute pero derived din siya kaya single line lang tapos broken line. Then ganoon din yung total sales. lipat na lamok eh. Patay ko lang. And then, ano, uh, yung senior, PW, uh, senior PWD discount, cashier signature, BIR authority to print, ATP date issued, uh, valid until, and yung printer information. So, basically, ano, yung sa delivery receipt, parang naandito rin yung mga, ano, yung mga items. May nadagdag lang. So, tingnan natin yung first normal form. Again, uh, ang rules is, uh, ang rules are, there must be no multi-valued attribute. So, pag multi-valued, ihiwalay natin. All attributes must be simple and single-valued attributes. All composite attributes must be assigned to a new entity to reduce them to simple attributes. And uh, there should be an attribute assigned as primary key. So, ayun. So, separate natin sa another entity yung multi-valued. And then, uh, identify natin yung ano no yung composite yung company address ulit printer address at saka client address and then ang primary key ulit is yung uh, kanina DR number ngayon naman ay uh, sales invoice number or SI number yeah tingnan natin yung Peter Chen uh, notation yung uh, drawing yeah so yung articles uh, sales invoice na andiyan ulit Yung article sold, doon natin ilagay yung mga multi-valued. And then, yung mga company address, meron ulit uh, street address, town, city, at saka province. Ito yung printer address, company address, at saka client address. And then, again, ang primary key doon sa main uh, entity, sales invoice, is SI number. Again, uh, second normal form. Ang rules are everything from 1 and F. All non-key attributes is an entity uh, must be functionally dependent on the whole primary key. Non-key attributes that are only partially dependent should be uh, on the primary key should be assigned to another entity. So, number one is everything from 1 and F. So, uh, yung ARD natin is already in first nor normal form. So, okay na yun. Yung pangalawa, so, ang tanong, are all attributes dependent on the SI number? So, hindi. So, kailangan natin ihiwalay siya and create new entities. So, ano yung result? Uh, ayan. So, may bagong additional entities, apat na additional entities na nakreate dahil hindi sila uh, fully functionally dependent on uh, the SI number. Eh, tingnan natin yung Peter Chen notation. So, nagkaroon tayo ng owner company na entity again, uh, client company, uh, printer company, nakahiwalay pa rin yung article sold, and then naiwan na lang kay sales invoice yung functionally dependent kay SI number. So, ano yung functionally dependent kay SI number? Yung SI date, payment terms, uh, OSCA PWD ID number, and signature. Actually, yung, ano, no? Okay, so, uh, kailangan niya atang i-improve ito, no? Uh, yung kasing OSCA PWD number, yung uh, SC PWD signature, at saka SC PWD discount ay hindi dependent sa, ano, no? Ngayon ko lang nakita, sorry. Uh, hindi dependent sa uh, SI number kundi dependent sila kay 
uh, OSCA PWD ID number. So, dapat may, ano, hindi lang apat na bagong uh, bagong entities. Dapat pala lima. Merong uh, SCPWD na entity. Ayan. Ang matitira lang sa kanya sa SI is SI number, SI date, payment terms, business style, cashier signature, total amount due, at saka total sales. Ayun, sorry ah, medyo kailangan pang ano to, i-refine. I ano no. Uh, i-post ko yung ano, yung better na design, may kulang pala na step. Okay, and then uh, third normal form, uh, and everything from second and F, all attributes must be functionally dependent only on primary key. Uh, attributes that are only partially dependent on the other primary key must be assigned to another entity. So, naka second NF na ba siya? Sabihin natin okay. Yes. Uh, although may, yun nga, may kulang ako isang step. And then all uh, non-key attributes in all entities are now functionally dependent on their own primary keys. Then, create tayo ng mga relationship showing the cardinalities and constraints. And then, yung mga walang primary key, lagyan natin ng primary key. Ayan. So, ano yung third normal form? Uh, ayan. So, meron tayong company, uh, owner company, printer company, uh, client company, at saka authority to print. And then, meron tayong article sold. Ang kulang ay yung SCPWD na entity. Ayan. Lagyan natin later. Okay. So, ano yung bagong gawa na Uh, na primary key yung item number so uh, magka magkakaroon tayo dito actually sa article sold uh, ganun din dun sa delivery item sa ano dun sa kanina no? so ang primary key ni uh, article sold actually ay si item number and SI number combine mo siya para magkaroon ka ng super key hindi pwedeng item number lang And then, si sales invoice sa primary key is SA number. Si owner company, company team, printer company yung uh, ano, accredi uh, printer accreditation number ang primary key. Ayan. And then, yung authority to print ay si BIR authority to print number. Okay, so... Ayan. Uh, baguhin ko to So, makikita nyo probably na uh, doon sa slide na ipapakita ko, corrected ko na yung SCPWD na entity. Pero, ayun. Uh, as of, uh, while kinikreate ko kasi to hindi pa corrected. So, tingnan nyo na lang na yung corrected version. Okay. So, gawin na nating ano, uh, entity set. Ayan. Nandiyan na yung table format. Okay, so hopefully na appreciate nyo to. And uh, para malaman ko na naintindihan nyo na yung naging discussion natin dun sa series na lectures natin mula dun sa How to Drop a Peter Chen Notation ERD, uh, yung normalization at saka itong pangatlo, database design uh, examples, uh, meron akong dalawang activities. Ano? Uh, paki, ano no? Uh, paki-normalize using Peter Chen notation itong OR or official receipt at saka collection receipt. Okay? So, ilagay ko na lang kung kailan ang deadline. So, kindly create your ano, uh, analysis by showing kung ano yung 0NF, 1NF, 2NF, at saka 3NF nitong mga paper forms na ibibigay ko sa inyo. Ayan. And then, ano, this time, unlike dun sa uh, normalization na, ano, database normalization na lecture, this time, kailangan ipakita nyo rin yung resulting entity set or yung resulting na table form nung Peter Chen ERD na ginawa ninyo. Okay? So, with that, thank you very much for listening and I will be waiting for your, ano, Uh, for the result of your activity. Kung may tanong kayo, 
uh, may inquiries, please ano, leave a comment and I will answer yung mga inquiries at saka comments. With that, uh, thank you and God bless.